we now give the proof of the approximation theorem. So, what we will do is, we will first make a reduction that should have been clear to the reader once uh, in during our discussion of the Bernstein polynomials. So, exercise, exercise, show that, show that it suffices to prove, it suffices to prove the approximation theorem, the approximation theorem for the interval, interval a b being nothing but close 0 1. Okay? So, you do not need to establish it for an arbitrary interval, you can uh, consider the special case close interval 0 1 and that is enough. Okay. So, once this exercise is done, we will focus on close 0 1 and we will use the Bernstein polynomials. Okay? So, central claim is that these B and F's converge to F uniformly on close 0 1. That is what we have to show. Okay. So, now to do this as I had mentioned before, we are going to analyze points in two, I mean two separate set of points. What we are going to do is we are going to analyze, we will analyze analyze points that are close close to k by n and points points that are far away that's somewhat vague remark but that's what we are going to do so let's begin the proof so fix x in close interval 0 1 and 0 less than delta less than 1. Okay? Now, we want to analyze the sum summation k equals 0 to n d k n of uh, x f of k by n. This is what dn of f is. Okay? So, to analyze this, what we will do is we will just focus on the sum of the Bernstein polynomials. First, what we will do is we will consider summation over k by n minus, del, uh, minus x is greater than or equal to delta b k n of x. Okay? So, note we have fixed the x. We want to analyze summation b k n of x f k by n. What we are going to first do is we are going to consider the sum b k n of x where k by n is far away from x. Okay? Note x is fixed. Okay. Now, this is certainly, of course, I am using a shortcut here by this is to denote that we are only summing up over those k's for which k by n minus x modulus is greater than or equal to delta. Now, this is of course going to be less than or equal to summation mod k by n minus x greater than or equal to delta 1 by delta squared k by n minus x the whole squared b k minus n x. Okay? So, what we have essentially done is we have multiplied by k by n minus x the whole squared which we know is greater than or equal to delta squared and we are dividing by delta squared. So, in essence we are multiplying each term b k n x by a quantity that is greater than or equal to 1. So, this is certainly going to be less than or equal to. Okay? So, now we have to estimate. So, this is a trick. So, this is essentially just a trick. So, now we want to estimate summation k by n minus x the whole squared b k n of x. Okay, this is what we have to do. So, look at summation k equals 0 to n k minus n x the whole squared b k n x. Look at this quantity instead. Okay? Now, from one of the identities involving the Bernstein polynomials that was left as an exercise to you last time. We can simplify this in a uh, not one uh, by using those properties we can greatly simplify this. What happens is this is nothing but summation 
k equals 0 to n k into k minus 1 minus 2 n x minus 1 k plus n squared x squared okay this whole thing times times b k n x okay so please check this please check that you get k into k minus 1 minus 2 n x minus 1 k plus n squared x squared times b k n x once you expand this out and this by the various identities that we have established uh, involving the Bernstein polynomials this is nothing but n into n minus 1 x squared minus 2 n x minus 1 n x plus n squared x squared okay fine so you can check that this is nothing but n x into 1 minus x once you do the basic arithmetic and this is going to be less than or equal to 1 by 4 n how did we get this last step that seems a bit weird well the last step involves this basic property that x into 1 minus x is less than or equal to 1 by 4 when x is in close 0 1 do you know why this is true can you prove this you can use calculus to prove it you can also prove it by elementary observations i urge you to try it in two different ways one using calculus and one using just elementary basic stuff okay so now that we have this equation that nx into 1 minus x is less than or equal to 1 by 4 n uh, ultimately what we have is the term we started out with uh, summation k equals 0 to n k minus n x the whole square b k n x is less than or equal to 1 by 4 n what we do is we divide both sides as expected we divide divide both sides of left extreme and right extreme left extreme and right extreme extreme by n square okay once we do that we get summation k equals 0 to n k by n minus x the whole square b k n x is less than or equal to 1 by 4 n okay so what have we managed to achieve well what we have done is we fixed delta and we managed to show that if k by n minus x the whole square is greater than or equal to delta square in other words if k by n minus x is greater than or equal to delta then this summation k equals 0 to n k by n minus x the whole square b k n x is less than or equal to 1 by 4 n now what are we going to do with this well we know that f is going to be bounded why because it is a continuous function on a closed interval so f is going to be bounded okay suppose suppose mod f of x is less than or equal to m for all x in 0 1 okay so choose a sort of an upper bound for this function capital m then what the final quantity we are really interested in is f of x minus bn of f of x this is what we are interested in this is going to be nothing but summation f of x minus summation mod k by n so i should not really write equal to i should write we are first analyzing those terms we are analyzing those terms for which k by n minus x is greater than or equal to delta so we are essentially analyzing the parts where k by n minus x modulus is greater than or equal to delta separately so f of k by n b k n of x which we already know is going to be less than or equal to summation mod k by n minus x greater than or equal to delta mod f of x minus f of k by n times b k n of x okay now how did we pull this trick how did we pull this trick well we pulled this trick because summation b k by n x is in fact 
equal to 1. This we already know. So what we have essentially done to establish this from the previous step is this f of x, this f of x we have written as f of x summation b k and x and we have taken this f of x inside. So we have written this as summation f of x b k and x. So this is what we did to the first term. This is what we did to the first term. Okay. From that this should become apparent how we got uh, mod f of x minus f k by n b k and x. Okay. Now combined with what we have established regarding uh, k by n minus x the whole squared uh, b k and x is less than or equal to 1 by 4 and combining that what we get is this quantity this quantity is going to be less than 2m 2m times 4 delta squared n which is nothing but m by 2 delta squared n okay so kindly check this kindly check Okay. So, what we have now established is that when, when x is far away, far away from k by n, then, then f of x and b and f of x are close, right. All we have to do to make bn of f close to f of x now is to make this capital uh, small n large. If you make small n large, then we will get that bn f x and f of x are very close to each other. Now we have to deal with those points for which x is close to k by n. Okay, so what we have essentially done what we have essentially done is we are splitting the sum b k and f of x into two parts those where which k by n is close to x and those where k by n is far away from x. So what we do is fix fix epsilon greater than 0 and now we are going to choose delta appropriately to get what we need and choose delta greater than 0 such that if y comma z are in close 0 1 with mod y minus z less than delta then mod f of y minus f of z is less than epsilon. We can do this because f is uniformly continuous. Because f is uniformly continuous I can find a delta that works universally for all points y comma z in the close interval 0 1. Note that this second part analyzing where x is close to k by n, we won't really require any of the properties of the Bernstein polynomials. Just the fact that f is uniformly continuous is enough to finish the proof. Okay. So now we need to again analyze mod f of x minus summation k by n minus x is less than delta f of k by n b k by n x okay this is less than or equal to summation mod k by n minus x less than delta again mod f of x minus f k by n b k n x okay by the exact same argument by the exact same argument that I had highlighted when we had a similar equality I mean inequality in the previous part okay but we are we are summing up over those k by n's where mod k by n is less mod k by n minus x is less than delta and by uniform continuity this is just going to be less than epsilon times 1 okay which is epsilon okay so now what we do is we choose so we have to combine both parts we choose delta so that so that this equation is satisfied so that star is satisfied 
that is those points where k by n is close to delta can be dealt with. Now for this choice of delta, now for this choice of delta, choice of delta, we choose, we choose n so large, so large that that m by 2 delta squared n which was nothing but the quantity that we got when we analyzed the previous term is also less than epsilon, is also less than epsilon. Net upshot is we will get that b n x of f x minus f of x is less than 2 epsilon for all x in close 0 1. Okay? This will be true when n is suitably large n is suitably large and this concludes the proof. So the proof of the Weierstrass approximation theorem that we have given ultimately relies on the uniform continuity of the function f and the basic properties of the Bernstein polynomials. We analyze those points x which are close to some k by n and for analyzing this just uniform continuity is enough. For those points for which k by n minus x is somewhat far away, we just use the basic properties of uh, the Bernstein polynomials and combining both we get the proof. This is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the module on the proof of the Weierstrass approximation theorem.